Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I was pretty nervous before the game just because in my coaching career, back-to-back -back games have never been the, the greatest thing for me. Um, I just think it's really difficult, especially when you win in the first one, to replicate that. Um, and I thought you saw a little bit of that in the first half, you know, give the ball away when we wouldn't normally do that. And um, But I think the moment from when we scored, I didn't really think that the um, game was in doubt, really. Um, because when we, when we tend to get a lead, uh, we very rarely give it up, especially here. Um, and we knew what Portland could bring and we knew what changes they could potentially make, but I just felt we were uh, pretty comfortable uh, in the moment we'd scored. Must have been a heck of a halftime speech. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think back to the flash game here when we won 4-2, um, we started off the second half the same one we did today. We scored a goal early. And then in um, Portland and in Washington, we started off sloppy and we conceded in Washington and it, and it changed the course of the game straight away. Um, and we, we rode a little bit of luck in Portland that we didn't concede in that period, even though I thought we were the best team in the first half. And so I said to them, you know, goals change games and the moment we scored in the start of the second half, it's game over. Um, and I thought we had a number of chances. The scoreline could have been greater um, and maybe should have been, potentially. But, you know, I think testament to the players. They've put a huge week in, you know, real disappointing um, result in Washington. And we bounced back. And, and to be fair, it probably helped with both games with Portland because they have that little bit of edge. So, yeah, just great week, you know, great end to the week. and. Um, puts us in a fantastic position now to make the playoffs, which has to be your first priority. Portland has some big names, obviously. Mm -hmm. They draw very, very well. And in some ways, they're kind of pointed to as one of the premier teams in yeah. the league's clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any extra juice in maybe measuring yourself against them for games like this and sort of wanting to, to make your guys a mark? Well, you know, I'll go back to the first year, and I don't think it was people in this room, but media um, around the league and around women's soccer ruled us out and said there should be two Portland teams and why is there a Seattle team and um, and that spurred us on I think that spurred us on last year because we couldn't get close to Portland in the first year we couldn't we played in four times we lost every game um, one was maybe dubious but the rest weren't and that probably was the biggest spark of us evolving um, and for me, today are games where we win for Bill and Teresa because they got hammered in the first year because we, we, you know, we couldn't get that slice of luck, we couldn't win games. And, you know, we, were, we were the poor little sister above. Um, and I feel like in the last two seasons we've turned that round. Um, and we're the team now that people fear and we're the team that people worry about when they go into their venue and you know no doubt Portland's um, environment is fantastic to go and play in and it's great when you silence it so that's something that without doubt spurs us on um, and this rivalry is great it's great for the league it's great for the players it's great for the fans um, and as long as we keep winning I'll, uh, I'll always love it. Uh, how important is the development of women's club soccer in the US? I think it's huge I have no you know I've, I've only been involved in this league um, over here but I say this all the time there's there is no reason why women's professional soccer can't flourish in this this country and I think you see why with today you know turnouts like today turnouts like you get in Portland and the World Cup bump and I, I truly believe it's I believe it's all of our responsibility to make sure that that continues um, you know, people who haven't been to maybe a rain game and only came today, I'm sure went away thinking that it was something that they might want to come again. Maybe the weather might put them off a little bit. But you know, this, this, the product that's on the field, I think is something people want to watch. And there's 14 plus million girls play the sport in this country. There should be a professional women's side um, or league for young kids to aspire to because the reality is only 20... 23 players can get in the national team and there's thousands and millions of other girls who want to try and become something um, and this gives them a platform to be that. Uh, how do you hope to see this league grow? 
I think we've got to carry on building off what's happening now. Um, and I'm a true believer it's all about the product. I think the clubs have a responsibility to make sure that their players want to buy in. Um, they want to be part of it. I think we're a good example of that where, you know, we don't have all the luxury in the world, but we've provided them with something that they buy into. And, and that's why people like Hope and Pino enjoy turning up to work every day because we give them something that they want to be part of. That's why Kim Little, who could play for any team in the world, um, plays here because she believes in what we're doing and she believes in the product. And I think when you match that with um, making sure that you think about them as people as well, I think that it's something that we can keep building on. Um, Billy, I'm telling you, Pina, uh, wanting to be here. She plugged right back in. Yeah. All starts right away. Yeah. How, how's that working? Because you commented recently about the, the emotional health and welfare yeah, I think it's been, I think it's really important. Um, you know, I think if we were to just talk about sports science, she probably shouldn't have played 80 minutes in Portland. But, you know, it means so much to play down there for her. And um, I think you saw today, she was a little bit tired, you know, maybe five minutes before she came off. But her quality speaks for itself. And I always say this all the time, she is who she is for a reason. She's an absolute class act. Um, and she's had a lot of um, things in her career, you know, injuries and setbacks. And she never stopped being who she is. And, and that's, she brings that to the field every week for us. And not just on the field, but off it as well. She's a fantastic part of this club. Um, she believes in what we're doing. And I believe she wants to be here. And, and that in itself is huge. And, and Hope's exactly the same. It's just unfortunate that she's got that knee injury that's holding her back. Because she was the first one when we came into training on Friday who was, you know, patting everyone on the back and saying how great it was that the performance we put on in Portland. So, you know, they're bought, they're bought in and they're not, they're not that just because it's their job, they're bought in because they love being there. In terms of continuing to build sort of your local footprint here and to continue mm -hmm. to draw these crowds, could you imagine two better advertisements for what you guys are doing here? No, you know, I think from a player perspective, those guys are fantastic and I think, you know, it's games like Portland where they're the ones we remember. Like I will always remember the 5-0 last year. I'll always remember beating them down there for the first time. It's a shame that we had to play each other back to back so close together because the things that you, you know, when the fixture list comes out, they're the ones that we all look for, no doubt. Because home and away, they bring so much to them. You know, any, any footballer who's played in a rivalry will tell you they're the games that you get up for. You don't... I don't have to do a speech. They're all ready to go. I probably have to calm them down, calm myself down too. Um, you know, and the staff feel it and the fans feel it. And, you know, I think the last two games have been a true testament of who we are, um, who we want to be, and the fact that we don't fit, feel like we're the finished product yet. We want to keep building. The uh, back to back comes so quick. Um, To be honest, I think it's slightly easier with the rival because I don't have to, you know, pump them off as such because um, the emotion's there. I think the good thing about the Houston one that we've got coming up is we've got, you know, 10 days-ish between, whatever it is, eight days on hand, between when we play them um, and the national teams go off and play their games and I think it will give us time to, you know, whatever. If we win, then we can think about the things we need to carry on doing to do well away. Um, and if we don't play great, then it will give you a lot of time to really think about it. And that's all you think about is, is making sure that you'd be ready for that. And I think that's the downside to back-to-backs is they can become, um, they can even themselves out very quickly. And I think that was the biggest testament about today was we didn't, we didn't allow that to happen. I thought there was periods in the first half where I was like, yeah, I'm not sure we'd be doing that if, if this game wasn't back to back, but um, we managed to get ourselves together and pull through that and we created a lot of chances today and scored some great goals. Speaking of the national team and absence of the star, they've got a couple games that were just announced that come awfully 
part of the field sort of semifinal matches. Mm -hmm. We always knew that was happening. Concern there. No, we always knew that was happening. Um, in fairness, it's a FIFA window. Mm -hmm. um, I think Kim, Jess, Rachel will all be playing. Katrine mm -hmm. might be playing too. Um, with their, I think it's European qualifiers then. So it's not just the Americans will be away in that period. So I think that's one of the reasons why the semi-final is when it is, and I think that's why the final is, is when it is too. We didn't want, the gap is there for a reason, and it's because it's a FIFA date. So it's something that was, everybody's known about for a long time. It's not just, um, you know, about the victory tour. Five was creating some big chances. Yeah. Uh, what are your impressions after the first few minutes? Yeah, great. I think, um, I think you see, you, or you saw today, you know, her quality. I think you saw it when she came on in the game here too. Um, she's great on the ball, she plays on both sides. I said to her, she naturally plays on the left, but I've said to her, you know, when she's on the right, she can come in on that left foot and hit a shot, and, you know, she hit a couple, and if they're on target, you know, she has a, with such power. A link up play with Kim is great. Um, and, you know, she, her description is, Every game in this league is like playing in Champions League. That's a standard, you know. So you've got to be at the top of your game to be able to perform, um, and that's something that's difficult for players who come from Europe because in most leagues, you don't have to play brilliantly every game to win. Whereas here you do. That's how strong this league is. But no, she's she's doing really well and she's fitting in great, and I'm really happy with her. When you uh, plan matches, you know, first half, second half, um, is it? Do you have a plan for your second half? Because I mean. Notice that 14 of the 20 home goals are coming in the first 30 minutes of the second half. Yeah. How much of that is 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 halftime adjustments, and how much of that is an adjustment you were ready to make? Sound like Jose Mourinho if I say that we plan it right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it, I I say all the time goals change games. Um, if you have momentum and you have a lot of possession and you create chances and you don't score, you leave yourself susceptible to being scored on. The way we play. We keep the ball. There's times where if we give it away, we can be susceptible to conceding. Um, and I think teams know that. So teams know if they can stop us playing and stop us getting momentum, then they have a chance of winning the game. Um, and we can control a lot of that. We just have to be smart. And I said to them at half-time today, if we are clever footballers, we'll win this game. If we're donuts, then we won't. And they played like clever footballers in the second half. You know, they recognise when it was on to go long, they recognise when we could play to feet, they recognise when we had them on the back foot and when we could push on and you know that's why we created so many chances that you know if we were being picky we'd say we should have finished more chances you know. Um, we reduced them to very limited chances inside our 18 yard box and we had a lot of chances in their 18 yard box and that's what football's about so yeah I plan it 100% nowadays. <laughs> um, has there been any conversation of Talk about the environment and everything mm -hmm. of the 20 games out on that pitch without losing with the loss. No, we don't really talk about it to be honest. I think it's there. I think you know, you know, it's in the back of your mind. And I'll be honest, before the game today, I'm in my mind going, we are not giving up this record to Portland. You know, we are. It will give it. It will end. That I will guarantee that it will end. Um, but I didn't want it to be against them. So. We, I won't lie and say it wasn't part of my uh, pre-match speech. So, yeah, I think it's it's a phenomenal achievement, you know. Um, in leagues like this, if you can win your home games, you've got a chance of being successful, and we do that. You know, we, we're a really difficult team to play against here, and I think teams know that. I think teams know.